root canal filling materials. In endodontics, we've got many filling materials. First of all is the core, which is mainly gutta percha. And the assisting material is the sealer, which seals areas that are the main core material for obturation is gutta percha. Now, gutta percha is the most commonly used in root canal filling material. It is a linear crystalline polymer that melts at a, uh, a set temperature. It occurs naturally as one for polyisoprene. It is from such trees and you can see the uh, raw material dripping and they take it and they uh, mix it with different materials. In dentistry it is mixed mainly with zinc oxide powder to make this rigid gutta percha. The gutta percha is harder, more brittle, and less elastic than natural rubber. It has two forms of crystalline phase. First of all is alpha, and then beta phase. The alpha form is the material that comes from the natural trees. The processed or beta form is the gutta percha in the root filling cones. Of course, there are other types of cones that are processed from other types. For example, when heated, gutta percha undergoes phase transition from the beta to the alpha, and this happens at 46 degrees. That means if I heat the gutta percha, it changes from beta to alpha. Normal cooling returns the gutta percha to the beta phase. When cooled very slowly, gutta percha crystallizes to the alpha phase. Gutta percha cones, they soften at 64 centigrade and they may be dissolved in chloroform, halothane and xylene solvents and these are important when we want to remove the gutta percha for retreatment. Gutta percha cones are mainly composed of 20% gutta percha 60 to 75 percent zinc oxide which acts <clears throat> as a thickening agent 5 to 10 percent they're made from resins waxes to give it its resiliency and metal sulfates maybe to get some kind of radio opacities We have got certain materials that may be impregnated with gutta percha to give antiseptic gutta percha or antimicrobial agents like chlorhexidine or calcium hydroxides may be seen. Gutta percha cones may be present in different tapers. They may be present in the 2% taper or maybe 4, 6, 8 and even 10. These are important because when we use rotary instrumentation we may use the specific taper of the gutta percha cone that coincides with the rotary instrumentation system. Gutta percha has many advantages. It's inert, does not have any uh, uh, in, uh, by, in, 
cytotoxic effect, dimensional stability, no allergy. It has certain antibacterial agent, especially when impregnated with antimicrobial agents. It does not stain dentine, radio opaque. We can compact it. It gets softened by heat and it softens by organic solvents. Disadvantages of gutta percha, it lacks rigidity, does not adhere to dentine, therefore we need sealers, and it is not, it does not go, uh, give complete adaptation to narrow areas, and again we need sealers. In an attempt to find an alternative to gutta percha, Resilon was developed and it is a thermoplastic synthetic polymer. It contains bioactive glass and radio opaque fillers like bismuth oxychloride and barium sulfate. The filler is about 65% of volume, it can soften with heat or be dissolved with solvents like chloroform. They may be present in pellets or cones and they've got their own sealers and they were supposed to, to make a monoblock between the dentine and the filling material. Solid materials for obturation, for example, the semi-rigid, these are outdated, they are not used anymore, like the silver cones. They were flexible and used to fill narrow curved canals. When silver cones contact the tissue fluid or saliva, they corrode, <clears throat> and these corrosion products are cytotoxic. We may see rigid materials like vitellium cones, which are inflexible and were used as endodontic implants, whereby we place them through the root canal and extrude them outside in, a, in some kind of implant. They, this is really outdated. MTA, mineral trioxide aggregate. MTA sealers may be used with gutta percha because MTA is biocompatible and it can uh, uh, fill areas like these lateral canals and they, we will not be very uh, uh, worried if, if the uh, sealer gets ex extruded outside the, the uh, to the periapical area especially when we have a lesion uh, this material has alkaline um, the properties which may assist in osseo, uh, osseous form. When we have an open apex, for example here, we cannot use the traditional gutta percha with the traditional systems for obturation because uh, extrusion may happen easily. That's why an MTA epical plug of around about two to three millimeters in the epical region is uh, important. And then we uh, obturate the main canal with the traditional uh, types of obturation, like here, the core carrier. This will ensure that the epical region has an alkaline uh, filling material to assist in osseous formation and healing. And at the same time, even if extrusion happens, 
it is totally biocompatible. Characteristics of MTA, first of all, it is biocompatible. No cytotoxic effect to cells, but antimicrobial to bacteria. Non-resorbable, no, uh, sorry, minimal leakage around the margins. <clears throat> Alkaline, treated areas need to be in, uh, infection free when applying MTA. So it's important that we dry the canal and ensure that there is no weeping canal. And it has certain compressive strength. MTA is composed from different materials. Number one is tricalcium silicate dicalcium silicate, tricalcium aluminate, tetracalcium aluminoferrate, calcium sulfate, and bismuth oxide. Many types of MTA, they differ in the percentages of these uh, different materials in each type of MTA. Thank you.